Wings! Wings! Where are my wings? They're retracted. And I can't get them. No one's come to save me. They think I can save myself. It's on them. Let's just be the end of it then. No more. Be done. Marco, issue number one. This story is out. Everybody's favorite character. Well, let's talk about the story. So, the story is... There's a lot to unpack with the story. And nobody asked me to do the story, but I am so excited to do the story. It's, it's just a typical story that nobody asked for. I'm doing it anyway. I'm just excited because I am not doing night terrors because that's a big event going on and I don't like doing big events. But let's get into this. So after the disbanding of the Justice League, we actually find Hako moving back to Metropolis and kind of moving into a new chapter of life. And that's all you need to know about Hago during this time, other than she's Kendra Saunders, and that's pretty much it. Let's get into this. So the story starts out with this woman named Marine, a woman in Metropolis who is clearly having a hard time. She drops her groceries and is helped by another woman who knows her name. We then jump back to 50 years to when Marine was a child playing outside and was interrupted by the same woman we actually saw earlier. Wolpachina, which I probably pronounced that name very much wrong. Wolpachina promises to give Marine her heart's desire if she wears this necklace that she's given her. Marine accepts the necklace, and Volchina disappears. We are then taken to the day before Marine actually is confronted by Volchina. Marine is still wearing her necklace and riding a pony, which she actually asked for when the woman Volchina actually encountered her. She's enjoying a nice day, however, trouble is seemingly brewing as a wolf-like creature appears right behind her. And moving on, we find Haku in the midst of a battle, present day, and facing countless some faceless enemies fighting alongside Black Canary, Power Girl, and Superman. The team is discussing Haku's personal life, and they express concern that she might feel lonely. Now that the Justice League has disbanded and she's no longer in a relationship with Martian Manhunter and it's weird conversation however Haku reassures them that she's perfectly fine and content with finding her own I mean whatever she even assures the team that she actually has a life outside being a superhero and she's actually meeting a friend from her college years and a friend that she hasn't actually seen in years. While she's actually distracted, she's actually hit by one of these faceless goons, and they actually hit her wings, and then she starts to plummet. But not one of the superheroes actually sees her. Not like Power Girl, the woman who she was just talking to, just catches her, just falls down like at super speed and catches her. Not Superman. And Hako realizes this, and she says... The best line of the book, Joe's on them, let this be the end, as she accepts her fate and almost hits the ground. Luckily, she's saved by Galaxy, this new hero, who I remember being introduced in a young adult graphic novel that DC made. I think it's called Galaxy's Edge or something. It's, it's a play on words. I can't remember the name of it. But she's a new hero introduced in 2022 and... Th- this is her first mainstream comic appearance, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, Galaxy introduces herself, saying that she's Galaxy and she's a superhero. She also says that she wants to help in the fight with the rest of the superheroes. Hako says no, but Galaxy still wants to help. So she uses her powers to unlock Hako's wings with her powers and <laughs> with her energy powers whatever they are she uses them to help against the demons too or aliens as she calls them by the way the aliens aren't important just just know they're not important to the story so she depowers the aliens and they're just reduced to the armor and then hawk goes like you killed them oh my gosh this comic is amazing anyway oh oh Galaxy then says, oh crap, let me check to make sure that I didn't actually kill them. And then she turns one back on and she's like, oh, oh god, 
That could have been terrible, but I didn't kill him. They're fine. They're fine. And then Harko just basically chastising her, saying that she could have. She didn't know the limit of her powers, or she didn't actually know that they were just more than or less than this armor. Uh, saying that she could have, you know, killed them at any point, and basically tells her to stay out of this and leave this to the professionals. That's a line in the book, by the way. And Galaxy then has a matter of doubt as she realizes she's not that good at being the superhero. Then her talking dog assures her she's not an amateur, she's doing pretty good, and she should know that. We then jump to Kendra meeting her friend that she was actually talking to earlier, or talking about to Power Girl, actually, or to the rest of the superheroes. And, um, she hasn't met up with this friend since, like, college, and I guess she's, like, I don't know, 20s, 30s, who can really know what age DC superheroes are, but... She, she explains, Abilene explains that she got married, got divorced, realized she was gay and might not be into a woman. And then they start flirting for some weird reason, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then for a quick minute, then Kendra states that she's not looking for a relationship at this second. And she has no direction in her life at all. And then she gets embarrassed and leaves. And I'm questioning why this happened at all in the comic. We then pick up with Wopa Lance. Which he, I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> she's trapped Marine in this liquid cell, and she states that since Marine's been making or wearing this necklace, it should be infusing her with nth metal, which I don't think that's how anything works, but hey. So, wh what? Anyway, she explains since Marine's been wearing this necklace, she's been infused with it nth metal for some reason because i guess it's nth metal and I'm, I'm not sure this is how nth metal works but i'm not a scientist on make-believe things okay she explains that she has what she needs to make this machine work and marine asks if she'll be okay but bubble lance says she doesn't know because this is her first time doing this we then transition to Haku in her bed with her mask still on and she cons batman asking for information on the galaxy hero that you know say the hero in galaxy so we get a full explanation on who she is batman has this information for i i don't even know how batman got this information so she was born on the planet Cydia and came to earth 12 years ago and adopted the name taylor blasene he also tells her about galaxy's ability to manipulate energies like gravity light and heat he then provides her in her location on where she is, the alien popular borough called A-Town with her girlfriend, which is located in Metropolis. I don't remember there ever being an alien borough in Metropolis or anything of the sorts, but I guess, I guess whatever. She also lives with her girlfriend, which is, eh. Also, she asked about if Galaxy actually saved the world because Galaxy actually said that she kind of saved the world once after she saved Hako. She seriously says that, not the bad, but I saved the world once. Which, if you're trying to introduce a new character to people, that's probably not the right line to actually say or to make the character say. But Batman assures her that she did, and Hako asks, Why doesn't anyone remember? And Batman says that. It's because of the trauma that everybody adored, which I don't understand. I just don't understand that line at all. The world's been, like, threatened multiple times. I mean, he must have come and died. Like, I don't understand. Anyway, Hugo, you know, hands up the call, and then she takes off the mask she has and goes all introspective. She asks herself if this mask is still her, or, like, why does she still wear the mask, like, when she's going to bed, like, what is this mask to her? And then she is zapped with some energy after Wolper Ants or whatever the heck her name is, activates her crazy machine. She then, Wolper Ants, this, screams some nonsense about <laughs> getting into the Nth Realm and being able to transit there and says, it's finally working, the Nth World is open. And then everything goes crazy, and the experiment clearly goes wrong, and Marine's cell is broken, and she's transformed because of 
this weird experiment to the nth world. <laughs> and Volperangus tells her there's much work to be done. We then transition to a town, and we see Galaxy and her girlfriend talking. So Galaxy comes in, and she's kind of in like self doubt, I guess, whatever. And because Hawko tells her to told her to screw off, like when she was trying to help. I think Hawko was kind of in the right more than Galaxy. Galaxy isn't equipped with the situation, but her girlfriend tells her that what she did was great, and. There's this weird line about, like, Galaxy's girlfriend makes a weird line about, like, the superhero thing. She says something similar to, you're the only person who can turn, like, superhero into a reason to torture yourself. What? And this is, what? Okay, whatever, whatever. And Galaxy's girlfriend tells her that she did the right thing and that was good enough. She basically tells her that she's a really cool superhero. And she's gonna be like one of the best new DC superheroes, which I don't really find this like self talk like really invigorating for like a new superhero. She just showed up. She is a new superhero. I don't understand. Um, but her girlfriend tells her that Hot Girl says what she said doesn't matter, and it's not like Hot Girl's a fly over there. And then Hako gets teleported there, and that's where this story ends. So, what did I think about this story? Um, it's fine. Other people will find, like, more things to complain about the story, but not... That's not my field, to be honest. That's not where I am as, as a person. I typically don't, like, try to scream or yell at stories. Unless it's, like, really bad or, like, really frustrating or something that DC or Marvel is really trying to hype out, and for no reason... Sometimes I just hate when comic book companies just hype up a book for it not to be, like, at the level we all think it is. That's what I'm really frustrated about in the comic media. But this book isn't that good, but it's not, like, terrible. Trust me, I've read worse books. I've read more frustrating ones, and this one is just not that good. We don't get that good introduction to, like, Kendra Saunders' Hako. And I don't think DC has really been that good at giving us, like, a clear-cut story of, like, who Hako is or, like, who Kendra is. Because I swear there are more people familiar with Shaira Hall than there are with Kendra. And that's, that's kind of a problem because I think it's mostly because of the Justice League cartoon. But, eh. We don't get a good introduction to her. And even with the story, we don't really get a good introduction to her. We really don't. And this is a weird version of Kendra 2. I didn't really expect those scenes where she is just given up. It really doesn't feel right. But that's just my opinion. Other than that, there's no moments that really decompress or like examine like what's wrong with her. Because Oh, she's teleported to another place, or oh, she's like finding some faceless aliens, or oh, she's like hanging out with a friend. Like what? And that's pretty much it. The art isn't that great, but it's alright. I didn't have any problems with it most of the time. Other than that, um, the lettering was good. I thought the lettering was actually pretty fun for this story, but. It's weird that the lettering is definitely the highlight, but not the writing or the art. I honestly think the lettering is is acceptable for a lot of the stories, but eh, it's alright. <sighs> Other than that, Galaxy is a new DC superhero that they're trying to make work in this Hawko series, which I find hilarious. But she doesn't have that much of a personality here. She shows up uh, two times and basically doesn't do that much. She helps, but she can't really because Hako doesn't like her, obviously. Other than that, there's not much more to talk about. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully, I'll have a better story, but I just love sometimes just 
talking about these like simple stories that sound kind of self-contained and don't really do much. Well, see you guys in that.